Hello everyone. Hi. Hello. Hi. Uh, good morning to everyone and uh, uh, so today uh, we are going to start uh, so we, we were studying about metals and non-metals good evening good evening to everyone i'm good how are you how are you guys good yeah and uh, how, how are the classes going so how are your classes going is it good see i can keep the chat on but uh, the problem is uh, so too many doubts will start coming at uh, simultaneously and i won't be able to take each and every doubt right so student please uh, okay so no nobody will touch the media player even if some someone is having a control right okay yeah so uh, today we are going to start this chapter and uh, in this chapter uh, sorry uh, today we, we are going to start the use of so we, we are going to learn the use of metals and non metals as we need a player is popping up again and again uh, okay fine <coughs> yeah so uh, Okay, so we have already studied uh, the physical property of metals and non-metals, the chemical property of metals and non-metals, right? Yeah, the media player is disturbing. Uh, okay, we will. Uh, so I'm going to close it whenever it comes out, whenever it pops out. Okay, fine. And uh, I would uh, I would request you people not to test the media player and not to write anything on the on the slide. Okay. So if anyone Okay, is there any other student who is having a problem in uh, hearing me or am I audible to everybody else? Am I audible to everybody else? Okay, so there are a few uh, students who are having problem in uh, hearing me, right? Okay. So I'm just going to write for those people. If uh, anyone is not able to hear me. Okay. Uh, just give me a second. Yeah. Uh, just a second. Yeah. Uh, see, uh, uh, just can you give me a second? Uh, just give me a moment. Okay, let's see what can be done about the media player. Okay, just give me a few minutes. Okay, yeah, just give me a few minutes. Uh, let's see whether uh, this problem can be resolved or not. Okay. There is some technical issue.
fine. Uh, so, so I don't think the media player will come come up again. So that problem has been resolved now. And the stop pasting. Oh, it's coming out again and again. Fine. Uh, can we start the lecture even though? See, uh, we can. Please uh, stop posting the smileys on the slide, right? Because that is not going to help, anyways. Fine. Uh, so let's uh, start the topic. I'm going to disable the chat for a while, right? Uh, let's start the topic. Okay, fine. So uh, today we have study about uses of metals and non-metals, right? So uh, we are going to start with use of metals now. Uh, Metals. So, so we have. So we have. So uh, initially, when we started classifying the elements, so we had classified the elements based on. So between metals and non-metals, right? Now uh, metals have certain properties. So we have studied about the physical property and chemical property of metals. So as you all know, that metals are malleable and ductile, and uh, metals are usually solid, and uh, uh, non-metals are. Uh, usually, uh, so so non-metals are also solid or gases. So non-metals are usually solid or gases, right? Now uh, metals are usually solid. Now non-metals are. Uh, so if we talk about the chemical property of metals and non-metals, then metals uh, are electropositive in nature. That means uh, metals have the tendency to lose electron. Now non-metals are electronegative in nature, right? Now non-metals are electronegative in nature. That means what? So non-metals have The tendency to accept electron, right? Now these these are the chemical. So based on these property, we had studied certain chemical and physical property of metals and non-metals, right? So we had studied how uh, so what will happen when metal will react with oxygen, and uh, how can metal react with acid and bases, right? Okay. Ah, uh, see, ah, uh, so uh, let's not get disturbed with the media player, okay? Now let's focus on uses of metals. Now, uh, so uh, let's uh, so so first we'll talk about uses of iron. So iron can be used in manufacturing pipes, drums, cylinders, wire nets, chains, and bolts. Right. So these are the uh, substances which can be prepared using iron. Right. Now iron can prepare. So iron can manufact iron can be used in manufacture of pipe because of its ductile property. Right. So we can uh, so so iron is uh, relatively ductile metal. Uh, so iron is ductile metal. So we can make pipes using iron, right? Now so uh, that's why uh, we can uh, so and iron. Uh, we also know that iron is malleable. So iron can be drawn into sheet as well. And if iron can be drawn into sheet, we can manufacture drums, nets, cylinders, etc. using iron, right? So you uh, due to the ductile property, a uh, ductile and ductile and malleable property of metal. So we can manufacture lots of uh, containers and uh, substances which is used in the structural engineering, right? Okay. Now, uh, this is the use of iron. Now, iron, uh, as uh, most of you would have observed in your real, uh, in your day-to-day -day -day life, that iron can be used in manufacture, uh, in uh, construction of bridge or railway track or construction of building, right? So, it can be used in several construction work as well, right? Now see, uh, so whenever we will talk about the uses of certain metals, so see, most of the metals have similar properties, similar physical properties, right? So most of the metals are ductile and malleable. So uh, almost every metal, except few metal, right? Now, uh, so uh, the first question that uh, comes into any student's mind is, so why uh, we can't use any other metal in uh, construction of bridge or construction of railway or construction of building, right? Now, uh, so whenever we talk about uh, the use of particular metal in uh, any uh, in manufacturing of any substance or uh, in uh, construction of any particular structure, 
then in that case we have to consider the property of metal and along with the property of metal we also need to consider the availability of metal right so whenever you uh, we choose a particular metal for uh, for, for uh, the construction of particular structure or for the, uh, manufacturing particular substance or manufacturing a particular appliances then in that we ha also have to consider about the cost of metal that is being used in the construction right so uh, iron is a relatively cheaper metal that is uh, you don't need to spend too much money in extraction of metal and preparation of metal uh, and preparation of iron right so that that's why iron is relatively cheaper and that's why iron is being used in most of the construction work because it is cost effective to use iron in the construction purpose is it clear okay uh now what are the various uses of copper the copper is also a metal and copper can be used in electrical conductivity right now uh, copper has a very good electrical conductivity so copper has uh, so copper has uh, the highest one of the highest conductivity among the metals uh, only there there is only one metal which is having high higher uh, electrical conductivity than copper and that metal is silver right so silver is having higher metal conductivity higher electrical conductivity than copper but we can't use silver uh, in uh, manufacturing the, uh, the electrical wires right electrical coils because silver is a costly metal so in extraction of silver you need to spend more money than in extraction of copper so copper is relatively cheaper metal and it has very good electrical conductivity so that's why we use copper in uh, manufacturing co electrical wires right copper can also be used as utensils right so you must have uh, would have seen the copper utensils somewhere right so we also use copper uh, as a utensil right now uh, we use copper as a utensil because it has a very good conductivity of heat as well so it is a good conductor of heat and electricity so based on these properties we uh, define the use of copper right so copper can be used as utensils uh, by electrical wires and coils right okay now what are the various uses of zinc so zinc is used in galvanization of iron so uh, galvanization of iron means uh, we use the zinc coating coating over iron now galvanization of iron is done to prevent corrosion of iron now what is corrosion so corrosion is a loss of metal right so uh, you must have seen the rusting of iron so rusting of iron is a form of corrosion and in the rusting of iron the iron get uh, so uh, during the rust formation the iron get lost from the bulk of the sample the bulk of the iron sample that you are considering right so this is called corrosion of iron where iron gets converted into oxides of iron and hence the metal is uh, lost from the appliances or uh, the structure that uh, that is made of iron so that's why we use galvanization of iron and in galvanization of iron we use uh, zinc coating over the iron surface right now when we use zinc coating over the iron surface it prevents iron from corrosion that is it prevents it cuts off the oxygen supply which is uh, required for the corrosion of iron right so it uh, it cuts off iron from the moisture and the oxygen supply which prevents iron from the corrosion so that's why we use zinc coating over iron to prevent the corrosion of iron right now zinc is also used in dry cell right so we use zinc anode in the dry cell and uh, dry cell uh, so so dry cell is the normal uh, cellular battery that is used in torch or uh, any other electrical appliances right so in torch uh, the cell that you use is a dry cell right okay now aluminium can be uh, used as uh, so there are several use of aluminium as well so aluminium can be used in uh, in um, making uh, overhead transmission wire 
Uh, it can be used in making it utensil. It can be used in making body of airplane and aluminum foil. Now see, uh, aluminum. Uh, so aluminum is also a metal which has very good electrical conductivity, right? Now aluminum is a very light metal as well, and that's why it it has very good strength, and it it is a very uh, it is very light in weight as well, right? So due to that property, aluminum is used in making body of airplane as well, right? And aluminum is used in making foil as uh, foil also. So aluminum can be beaten down into very thin sheet, and due to this property, it can be used in uh, in uh, making wrapping foil for food as well. Okay. I'm going to enable the chat for a while. See, media player is disturbing too much in the class. I know that is an issue. Yeah, I have enabled the chat for a while. So, do you have any questions? So, there, there, I have seen some of the student has raised hand. So, if you have any question, you can post it here. Yeah, I know. Uh, so, uh, let's see uh, what can be done about the media player. We'll try to sort out this issue very soon. Okay. I know this is disturbing. So, media player is disturbing. Right? But apart from that, do you have any question from the topic? Just give me a moment. Okay. See, I am going to disable the chat in a minute. So, uh, if anyone has any question, just put it, put, put your question in the chat box. I will try to solve your doubts. Yeah, so whosoever has raised hand can post your doubt in the chat box. I will disable the chat again in a minute. And then I will, and I will take a few of the questions. Okay, fine. Uh, so I am going to disable it now. Is it done? I hope everyone has posted his question. Okay. Yeah. So I am going to disable. I have disabled the chat now. Let's see uh, how many questions has come now. Fine. Yes, uh, so someone has asked, uh, is aluminum uh, malleable? Yes, aluminum is malleable too. So, aluminum, uh, most of all, uh, most of the metals are ductile and malleable. So, malleability is a property where metal can be drawn into thin, thin sheet or it can be beaten down into thin sheet, right? So, aluminum is also malleable and that's why uh, we can uh, we can make aluminum foil, right? So, uh, for, uh, for making aluminum foil, you need to beat down aluminum into very thin sheet, right? So, aluminum foil is nothing but the sheet of aluminum. So, aluminum is also malleable, right? Okay. Now, how is zinc used in dry cell? Uh, see, zinc is uh, acting as a cathode in the dry cell, right? So, we use zinc as a cathode in the dry cell, uh, sorry, anode in the dry cell. So, uh, in the dry cell, there is an anode and a cathode, right? Just give me a second. Okay. Now, uh, what happens in a dry cell? So, uh, I can show you how zinc is used, right? So, you must have, so everyone, everyone must have seen the dry cell, right? So, in the dry cell, we use zinc as anode, right? Let's say we have taken a zinc coating around the battery. So, the, in the battery, 
you will see a lead cap on the top of the battery then there is a zinc coating inside the battery which acts as anode right and there is carbon rod this is the graphite rod which acts as cathode right so this graphite this is graphite rod which acts as cathode and anode is zinc right now inside the uh, inside the dry cell so there are some electrolytes so whenever you manuf manufacture a cell so you need a cathode you need a, an anode and there should be some electrolyte inside the cell now in this case the electrolyte that you use is So in this case, the electrolyte used is NH4Cl. Cl plus carbon, right? So NH4Cl plus carbon uh, is used as the electrolyte, right? And there are some other part in the electrolyte. So we use manganese dioxide as well along with. Right. So these are the electrolytes that is used in dry cell. So uh, and in this case, the zinc, uh, the zinc metal acts as anode. So there is a chemical reaction which is occurring inside the dry cell, and due to the chemical reaction, uh, an electricity is set up. Right. So electric current is produced to, due to a chemical reaction inside the dry cell. Right. Now zinc will be participating in the reaction. Clear? This is your dry cell. Now, uh, I hope your doubt is cleared now. Now, let's take another doubt. doubt. What is the use of metal? See, uh, metal can be used. Uh, so, so, there are several uses of metal owing to the properties of metal that we have discussed in the previous class. So, we have discussed that metal are very malleable and ductile. So, metal can be used in manufacturing. Uh, so, it can be used in several structural work right so we can use uh, we can use metals in manufacturing pipes and uh, we can use metals in manufacturing utensils it can be used in manufacturing of several electrical appliances right so there are several use of metals so we are discussing the use of uh, metals individually and uh, we are trying to relate uh, the use of metal with some of the properties of metals right Now, is there any other question? Use of copper. So, see, copper, as, as I told you, copper is used in manufacturing work. Uh, so, uh, copper is used in making electrical wires. Copper can be used in making coils and it can be used in making utensils, right? Now, copper is used in making electrical wire because uh, because of the property of copper. So, copper is one of uh, copper is a metal with, which is having second highest electrical conductivity, right? Now, highest electrical conductivity is corresponding to uh, uh, silver. Now, electrical conductivity is what? So, electrical conductivity is the ease of conduction of electricity when electricity is applied across the metal, right? Now, copper is having second highest electrical conductivity means what? So, when you will apply electricity across copper, so uh, conduction of electricity in copper will be easy, right? So, there will be re less resistance inside the copper. Clear? Now, that's why we use copper in making electrical wires. Why the body of, uh, so how aluminum foil keeps food warm
Yeah. So uh, someone has asked a question: How aluminum foil keeps food warm? See, we use aluminum foil to wrap up the food, right? Uh, so it is used to wrap up the food so that uh, so if we are wrapping up the food in any other uh, so it preserves the food, right? And uh, yeah, uh, and uh, since the electrical conductive, so and it it uh, keeps the food warm because it does not. Uh, so the electrical conductivity is relatively high. Metal, uh, so electrical conductivity of metal is higher. Right now, uh, it is used mainly because so we use aluminium foil mainly because it uh, does not allow. Uh, so it uh, it helps in preservation of food for a longer period of time, right? So if you keep the food, uh, so let's say you are keeping the food inside a box, inside a tiffin box, let's say, uh, then uh, so the when the food will get uh, so when the food will uh, get cold, uh, then in that case you must have seen some amount of moisture on the food, right? So to avoid the food uh, getting moist inside the box, use aluminium foil to wrap up the food, right? And which helps in preservation of the food, right? It does not keep the food warm. So if you have uh, used an aluminium foil uh, to wrap up the food, uh, to wrap up the hot food, so uh, that won't be warm for a longer period of time, right? Because the electrical, uh, because the conductivity, heat conductivity of foil is very high. So you are using a metallic foil, which is a conductor of heat, right? So it can't keep the food warm. Now uh, another question is. Uh, so why the body of airplane is made up of aluminium? So, body of airplane is made up of aluminium because uh, because of the several properties. Now, aluminium is lightweight, right? So, for manufacturing of uh, airplane, we need a lightweight metal, right? So, the density of aluminium is not very high. And uh, at the same time, uh, so aluminium has a better tensile strength, right? And uh, it has a better uh, crack resistance. So there are several properties that we need to have for uh, during man. So uh, we, we need to have corresponding to a metal for uh, making airplane body, right? Now it satisfied all the characteristics. Yeah. Is uh, resistant resistant to heat as well, and uh, uh, at the same time we need a malleable and ductile metal to ma uh, manufacture the body of airplane. So, if, so it satisfied most of the characteristic, right? Now the basic characteristic is aluminium is lightweight and it has relatively good strength. That's why we use aluminium in manufacturing of bo body of airplane. Can aluminium foil contaminate our food? See, it cannot contaminate our food, right? So, if the food is acidic, uh, so if, if if you are wrapping an acidic food, so if the food is containing some acid, then aluminium can. Uh, so uh, then there is a possibility of loss of aluminium for the from the foil, right? But only when the aluminium, uh, when uh, only when the food is containing some acid, right? How zinc? So it is not. It does not contaminate our food usual. Now someone has started pasting a smiley again. So uh, stop doing because okay. So stop posting a smiley. How zinc is used in cells? So I'll, I already have described how zinc can be used in cells. What are the other ways in which aluminium can be used? So aluminium can be used uh, in several other ways, right? So it can be used uh, in manufacturing of wire as well. So you uh, you can see electrical wire made, made up of aluminium too, but uh, that would be an efficient use of metal, right? Because uh, for uh, for manufacturing of wire, you need uh, the wire electrical wire to be thinner, right? But if you are making an electrical wire from aluminium, then in that case uh, you will have to use a thicker wire of aluminium, right? So aluminium can be used in uh, various, uh, so it can be used uh, at, uh, in manufacturing of various things, right? But uh, uh, 
So we have shown some of the use of aluminium right here. So uh, these are the basic uh, use of aluminium. It can be used at several places, right? Use of copper. So we already have studied the use of copper. What is aluminium's beating property quality called? So aluminium's beating property quality is called magnetic of aluminium, right? So if it can be beaten down into sheet, uh, thin sheet, then it is called malleable, right? So which is the strongest metal? See, uh, so uh, metal, strongest metal, by strongest metal, so which property are you actually talking about? So uh, by strongest, I'm assuming that you want to ask whether, uh, so which uh, metal has a better tensile strength, right? So, uh, so a strength of metal can be described by different parameters, right? Now, uh, every uh, so so uh, every so metal usually have very good strength, right? So, uh, different metal have different properties. Now, if we only talk about the tensile strength, then gold has the highest tensile strength, right? Gold can be drawn into very thin uh, wire. Here, so in terms of ten tensile strength, gold is having the highest strength. <clears throat> there are other metals as well which are very uh, uh, good. Uh, so titanium is a very strong metal, right? So titanium is used uh, in manufacturing of spaceships right because it has very good tensile strength it has very good crackle strength as well now why as you mean as over is aluminum a good conductor of heat yes aluminum is also a good conductor of heat right okay <clears throat> that's why it is used in manufacturing of utensils Okay, now I'm going to enable chat again. So I have answered most of the doubts, right? What is the difference between metals and non-metals? Electron. Now see, uh, difference in metals and non-metals, electrons. So electrons of uh, metals and non-metals are similar, right? That why, that, that's why we call electron as a fundamental particle. What is atomic number of zinc and what is the symbol? Uh, see, atomic number of zinc is, uh, so you can find the atomic number of zinc, scandium, titanium, and iron, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc. Right? So uh, it is 30 for zinc and its symbol is ZN. Right? Okay, fine. Uh, so we are going to continue the lecture. And then I will take the doubts in the, uh, in the uh, when the lecture is complete, right? Is it okay? Which metal is malleable? Yeah. <clears throat> now uh, I want to. What is tensile strength? Tensile strength is the strength of matter. So it is defined. Uh, so let's say you are pulling the uh, pulling uh, a metal from both the sides. I have already described malleability, right? What are you doing? There is a student who is posting the same question again and again. I am not expect, expecting a kiddish behavior from you people, right? So I am expecting that everyone knows how to behave on the online uh, on the online platform, right? Now I have seen so many people have posted the smileys here. Now what is the meaning of this? Why, why are you doing that? Can anyone tell me? See, I, I I have got the names of every student who have done that. So whether you are going to remove all the smileys, right, or you are not going to paste their smileys again. If anyone is going to do that ever again in the lecture, so I will make sure that that student will never attend the lecture, right? You are not supposed to do that. 
clear? Uh, is it clear to everyone? You are not going to paste this smileys again ever, right? Electrolyte. So there are several things that you need to know, right? We will discuss about each and everything. Yeah. Uh, Ayush, uh, make it a habit. If you have posted the question once, you need not to post it again, right? Once again, the same thing to you as well. So you can post your question only once, right? What is tensile strength? I am going to describe it. So tensile strength uh, is the strength of matter. So when you are pulling the matter, uh, when you are pulling a metal from two sides, right? Let's say you have clamped. Uh, so this, let's say this is a metal bar. Now you have clamped the metal bar in one at one side, and then if you are pulling the metal from other side, right? Let's say you have clamped the metal at one side. So I'm not expecting a uh, TK. Oh, that's so fine. So the tensile strength is what? So you have, let's say you have clamped the metal from one side and you are pulling the metal from other side, right? Now how can you pull the metal? So whenever you pull the metal, you need to apply some force, right? Now the strength, uh, so the force at which uh, the metal break is uh, so so it depends on the, uh, the so so the strength depends uh, the tensile strength of a metal depends on the force at which the metal breaks into pieces right or the crack develops into the metal now this is strength is called the tensile strength of metal the strength which describes that how much you can pull a metal or how much you can elongate a metal that is called tensile. Now let's discuss about uh, the uses of silver. Okay, I'm not going to enable the chat again. Right? I will ask. I will take your doubt in the last of the lecture. Fine. Now so uses of silver. So silver is used in uh, photographic film. So it is used uh, as so, so silver iodide is used in making photographic film, and silver can be used in making utensils. It can be used in making jewelries, right? Silver can be used in manufacturing of coins. It can be used in making silver coins as well, right? So these are the use of silver. So it can be used as jewelry, coins, utensils, photographic film. So in photographic film, we use silver iodide, right? Silver iodide can be represented by AG, I. AG is the symbol for silver and I is the symbol for iodide, right? Iodine. Now these are the several uses of gold. So gold can be used in manufacturing jewelry. It can be used in making coins. It can be used in making and it can be used in uh, the electronic devices as well, like mainframe of air, 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 artificial satellites, right? Now, uh, how, why, why are so, so? Uh, what are the properties of gold that is uh, there uh, because of which we are using the gold in manufacturing of jewelries, right? So, gold has a very shiny process. So, so Gold is very lustrous in nature, right? Uh, that because of the lustrous nature, we have been using gold for a very long time, right? In jewelry. Now, gold was used as, as coin as well. So, uh, we used to, so initially, uh, so uh, before, uh, so uh, 2000 years back, 1000 or uh, 2000 years back, so gold was uh, so so gold, we used to have gold coins as a currency, right? And uh, uh, it was so we used to have gold coin as a currency, and that currency was very valuable. 
Now, why gold is valuable? So, it is because gold is one of the ra rarest metal uh, in the earth crust, right? So, uh, you, so uh, what is the meaning of rare metal? So, gold is uh, rare metal means uh, you won't find gold easily, right? So, you need to, uh, so, so there is very less gold available in the earth crust. So, that's why gold is rare metal and uh, that's why it is costly, right? Now, uh, so gold is also used in plating of the metal metals or it is used in manufacturing of the metal metal as a whole. Now it is used in uh, uh, electronic devices because gold is very uh, ductile in nature. So you can make very thin wires from the gold and wherever you need a very thin wire in the electronic device, gold can be used. Now what are the various uses of platinum? So platinum is also used in jewelry. Now again, platinum is uh, a rare metal and it, it is very lustrous in nature and platinum is also very costly, right? Now platinum can be used, uh, platinum is also used in manufacturing of watches. Now platinum is very soft in nature, right? So platinum is soft, uh, that's why we use platinum in watches uh, as well, right? Now platinum can be used as a catalyst, so we use platinum in uh, several reactions and platinum can, use, uh, can be used as catalyst. A catalyst is what? So in a reaction, if uh, there is a subs if there is a compound, if there is a metal or there is a compound which is not participating in the reaction, but it is affecting the rate of reaction, right? then it is a catalyst. So platinum does not actually participate in the reaction but it helps in the reaction, in, uh, in the, uh, helps in the, in the reaction, right, okay. So platinum can be used as catalyst in manufacturing of HNO3 and H2O, right, H2SO4. <coughs> now what are the various uses of lead? So lead can be used in manufacturing of lead crystal glass, right. So in this we can use lead and lead can be used in lead storage battery as well. So this is lead, uh, this, uh, this battery is also called lead storage battery or lead acid battery. Lead storage or lead acid battery and lead storage battery or lead acid battery so uh, so this battery uh, can be recharged as well right so this is a rechargeable battery now what is there inside the rechargeable battery so there is lead so lead can be represented by symbol pb right there is lead dioxide. Lead dioxide can be represented by PbO2. Now these two, uh, these two are used as anode and cathode respectively during discharging of the lead storage battery. Now what is discharging and charging? So when the uh, when the battery is producing electricity, so uh, so that that is called discharging of battery, right? Now, when you are supplying the external electricity to charge the battery, then that is called charging of the battery, right? Now, in this battery, we use lead. Uh, so there is a uh, so lead is acting as a at, as an anode during the discharging of battery, and this acts as cathode during the discharging of battery when the electricity is being produced from lead storage battery, and there is a PbSO4 solution inside the battery as well. Now PBSO4 is electrolyte. So someone has asked about electrolyte. So electrolyte is used for conduction of electricity inside the cell, right? 
So uh, whenever the whenever the uh, cell is manufactured, whenever the battery is manufactured, so battery has uh, what is the purpose of battery? So battery conducts electricity in the outer circuit, right? But at the same time, there is a conduction of electricity inside the cell as well. Now uh, PBSO4 is the electrolyte which helps in conduction of electricity inside the cell, right? Okay. And uh, uh, okay, so uh, is it clear? Now chromium, uh, chromium is again a metal which is used in electroplating of iron. Now chromium in, is used, so you would have seen chrome uh, metal, so, so this is a common term which is used, so chrome metal, right? Now what is chrome metal? So chrome metal is uh, electroplating of, when, uh, when you have electroplated uh, chromium on the iron metal, then that is called chrome metal, right? Now, why electroplating of chromium is done on iron? So, it is done to avoid the corrosion of iron, right? To avoid the formation of rust on the iron. Now, corrosion provides, uh, corrosion, uh, sorry, chromium provides the corrosion resistance to iron when it is electro, uh, when it is plated over iron. Now, electroplating is a process in which uh, we deposit chromium by supplying electricity inside a uh, on uh, so on some chromium salt and when the electricity is applied on the chromium salt then chromium get deposited on the iron electrode right so iron uh, would be acting as electrode where chromium is getting deposited so iron acts as cathode and there is something which is acting as anode right so this is how we can electroplate this is how we can form a layer of chromium over iron What are the uses of carbon? Now we are going to talk about the uses of non-metals. So non-metals are, uh, so there are few non-metals which are also lustrous. Now non-metal which is lustrous can be used in ornaments or jewelries. And uh, uh, so depending on the properties of non-metals, uh, they use can be, so it can be used uh, by us, right? Now diamond the non-metal which is lustrous in nature. So that's why diamond is used in making jewelries, right? Graphite is slippery in nature. Graphite is uh, an allotrope of carbon. So diamond and uh, graphite are the allotropes of carbon only, right? Now, uh, graphite is uh, slippery in nature, right? So graphite is soft and slippery in nature. So that's why graphite can be used as lubricant. Now we, uh, so we use graphite as a lubricant uh, in uh, various industrial purposes. Right? Now graphite also acts as electrode. Right? So we use carbon electrode in several industrial process. Now graphite is used as electrode because uh, of uh, two reasons. So uh, one is it is very easily available and it is cheaper. Right? So it is not very costly. So if you are uh, using graphite as electrode and let's say you have to replace the electrode every time, then it will become cost effective if you are using graphite as electrode, right? And uh, it is used in pencil lead as well because it is soft, so it can uh, leave mark on the paper. So only the soft substances can leave mark on the paper, right? And graphite is very soft in nature. Now I'm going to enable the chat for a while. Uh, just want to ask this guy why he has posted uh, so many smileys over here. This is done by only one student, right? Silver is used in making photographic film, right? So we use silver iodide in uh, making photographic film. Silver is expensive, right? What is graphite electrode? So when graphite is acting as an electrode, then it is called graphite electrode. So uh, graphite uh, has a property. See, I am going to tell you. Difference between galvanization and electroplating. I will tell you what, is the, what are lubricants, which is the strongest metal again. What is the melting point of silver? Oh, 
पता नहीं क्यों ब्रेक इन That is very good question. Does Google Chrome have any relation with Chrome Metal? No, it does not have any relation with Chrome Metal. Right? Fine. Uh, so, so I'm going to disable the chat again. Okay. Yeah. See. Uh, so uh, someone has asked about what is the difference between galvanization and electroplating. So galvanization uh, can be done. Uh, so galvanization can be done simply. So uh, you can put the. Uh, so we saw the galvanization of zinc over. Iron, right? The coating can be done uh, by melting the metal and putting a, a molten metal on the surface of iron, right? The zinc coating can be developed without doing the electroplating. Now, electroplating is what? In electroplating, you use electricity for the plating of metal. So, when we are using electricity, in that case, what is happening? So, let's say you have to do. Electroplating of uh, chromium over iron. Then, in that case, uh, you will need a chromium solution, right? So there will be chromium salt uh, in a in a solution. Let's say this is chromium salt. Now, in the chromium salt, you will have to take Is there anyone who is having control of the media player? Don't disturb the media player, right? Okay. Don't touch the media player if anyone is having control of the media player. Now in electroplating, uh, see. Electroplating, in case of electroplating, a salt solution is taken. Let's say again salt has been taken here. Cr C plus right? is there in the solution. Let's say Cr SO4, uh, Cr2 SO4 whole thrice is a salt solution that you get. Then in that case, uh, SO4 2 minus will also be present in the solution. Now in electroplating, you will need another electrode. Let's say you have taken carbon electrode. And in case of electroplating, you supply uh, an external source of electricity. So, you connect these two electrodes. Now, this is iron electrode, right? So, you have taken one iron electrode and there is another electrode that you have taken. Let's say uh, this is an electrode which will... Uh, so, this iron will be acting as cathode, right? Now, if this iron is acting as, as cathode, let's say you have taken chromium electrode only, right? This is chromium electrode. So, chromium is more reactive than iron. So, chromium will get dissolved in the solution. 
right so the reaction a reaction an electrolytic reaction will take place here so if, during the electrolysis the chromium inside the solution right yeah, i am not able to write about this slide because of some student who is disturbing the media player again and again right no one will touch the media player now the reaction which is occurring is chromium is getting dissolved chromium is getting converted uh, so when the electricity will be when it, uh, when an external source of electricity is applied over the cell then chromium gets converted into cr3 plus and so this chromium is getting dissolved and again this chromium 3 plus is getting deposited over the iron right so this is how the electrolysis occur now it will accept now this will release three electrons right and uh, so uh, in case of reduction so this is called uh, so this is called uh, sorry the chromium is getting oxidized in this case it is occurring at anode right which is the chromium electrode now at iron electrode chromium is getting deposited over the iron right and it is forming chromium now here you will observe a layer of chromium getting deposited over the iron this is called electroplating right okay let's go ahead so we have already discussed the use of carbon now uses of silicon so silicon uh, is used in manufacturing of ferrosilicon so ferrosilicon is a uh, is an uh, is a type of substance which is used in manufacturing of silicon as well right and this is very hard in nature so it is made uh, it is made up of iron and silicon silicon right and it is very hard in nature a sulfur can be used in vulcanization of rubber now vulcanization of rubber is uh, also called hardening of rubber so we use sulfur in hardening of rubber and sulfur can be used as ointment as well right so uh, it has a fungicide effect so it is used in ointment right and uh, we can use sulfur in manufacturing of sulfuric acid and sulfuric acid is used in several industrial processes now use of phosphorus so phosphorus can be used in making fertilizers right so fertilizers can be uh, so, so fertilizers are used and uh, 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 used for the crops right sulfur so, phosphorus can be used in fireworks and phosphorus is also used on the ma uh, used in making matchstick right in the matchstick we use red phosphorus so red phosphorus uh, burns easily so that's why we use phosphorus right now uh, the uses of hydrogen so hydrogen can be used in making fuel so hydrogen can be used in fuel right so we can make oxy hydrogen torch from hydrogen as well right so in oxy hydrogen torch we use oxygen and hydrogen and hydrogen has a property that it burns in air right so hydrogen does not support in the burning in the combustion but it it gets burnt itself right so that's why we use oxy hydrogen torch and we use oxy hydrogen torch for the industrial purpose right okay fine uh, now hydrogen can also be used in extraction of metal so you must have so hydrogen is what so hydrogen is a reducing agent and uh, it can be used in extraction of metal now metal exist in some compound form or the molecular form inside uh, the ore and uh, you can use hydrogen to reduce the molecule into metal right now use is a fire dye uh, iodine so iodine can be used in photographic film right so as uh, we uh, we have already discussed that silver iodide is used in the photographic film so iodine is also of 
photographic fill, right? So iodine can be used in manufacturing graphic fill. Iodine can be used as tincture of iodine. Now tincture of iodine is used uh, for uh, so tincture of iodine is used for uh, wounds, right? Uh, so it is used for dressing of wounds, right? And it is also a disinfectant of water. So you can use tincture of iodine for, uh, as a disinfectant of water as well. But uh, you should use a very small amount of tincture of iodine when you are using a disinfectant of water. Because uh, it, it is, so consuming too much iodine can be poisonous for health as well. Now, what are the uses of chlorine? So, chlorine, uh, so we can use chlorine ta tablet. So, chlorine tablet is used uh, for, uh, as a disinfectant again. Uh, so, it can be used as a disinfectant of water. It, it can keep the, uh, so, so, uh, yeah. So, that is one uh, use of uh, chlorine tablet, chlorine. And another use of chlorine is chlorine can be used as bleaching powder as well. Now, bleaching powder does the same thing. So it also disinfects the water, All right? Bleaching powder is CaO Cl2, right? Bleaching powder is CaO. Chlorine is Cl2, right? Now uses of oxygen. So oxygen can be, uh, so oxygen is used uh, in respiration, right? So uh, while respiration, what happens? So glucose reacts with oxygen and uh, am uh, amount of energy is produced when glucose reacts with oxygen. So you can see the combustion of glucose which is taking place here. Then carbon dioxide is produced and carbon dioxide is exhaled out, right? So you inhale oxygen. So oxygen gets combined with glucose and some amount of energy is produced. Then the carbon dioxide produced during the respiration is exhaled out. So this is what occurs in respiration. So oxygen is uh, used in respiration, right? Oxygen is used uh, in combustion of several substances, right? Now, oxygen can be used as a fuel and it can be used in welding as well. And in welding also you use oxygen to, for the combustion of gases, right? Now, use of nitrogen. So, nitrogen is used in manufacturing of ammonia, right? This is how we can use nitrogen. So, nitrogen uh, uh, can react with hydrogen to produce. Ammonia. Now, someone has asked about the symbols corresponding to some metals, right? I am going to draw all the symbols. Symbol for iron is Fe, right? And the Latin name corresponding to this is Ferrum, right? Ferrum. So, uh, there are two ion that is formed, one is ferrous, another is ferric and Fe is the symbol corresponding to iron, right? Atomic number of iron is how much? So, atomic number of iron is 26, right? Copper is Cu. Copper is represented by Cu and atomic number of copper is 29, right? Zinc is Zn and atomic number is 30. Aluminum is Al, aluminum can be represented by Al, right? And aluminum is how much? Uh, so, sodium, magnesium, aluminium, it is 13, right? So, I am going to write the symbol of every substance. Silver is Ag, right? And uh, just look at the atomic number of all the metals that 
objectives or the elements that is your at home right so this is your homework you have to remember the atomic number of all the elements this is au au right platinum is represented by pt lead is represented by pb right chromium is cr carbon is c right carbon can be represented by c now silicon can be represented by si right sulfur can be represented by s and phosphorus can be represented by p hydrogen exists in the gaseous form the symbol for hydrogen it's a hydrogen is h right and the molecule that exists in nature is h2 iodine also exists in the molecular form but iodine is solid in the form and the symbol for iodine is and the naturally occurring most stable state of iodine is i2 and this is solid this is naturally occurring naturally uh occurring most state of iodine is naturally right and symbol is this is symbol a chlorine can a uh, symbol for chlorine is cl and cl2 is the naturally occurring most stable state of chlorine oxygen is represented by o and naturally occurring most stable oxygen is o2 nitrogen is represented by n and naturally occurring most stable state of nitrogen is n2 n2 is gaseous form here so this is your lecture okay i am going to enable the chat for a while okay so this was the use of metals and non metals right i know there was some problem with the smiley and uh, so uh okay fine uh, so we will uh, so i'll take uh, your doubts so keep your doubts with you and if you have any doubt you can ask you doubt in the uh, in the coming lectures right and try to practice everything that we have studied in this in this class okay fine so uh, i will meet you guys in the next class okay see you guys in the next class yeah good i am also supporting rc let's see whether it is reaching in the play off or not yeah that's the challenge for us yeah okay guys uh, see you in the next class and bye bye yeah bye have a good day